we have a vision is to have our church our family to be a praying family you know prayer was removed out of the schools but that's not the problem the problem is the prayer left the homes of Americans a long time ago our goal is not to bring prayer back into the White House our goal is to bring prayer back into your house into our house once it's in our houses it will affect the White House it will affect the schools it will affect our communities <laughs> yesterday I googled word prayer just type prayer I found out that eight things came out eight websites came about prayer and the ninth wasn't a website it was a map and on the map it had word hungry generation <laughs> now I understand it was catered to local searching and because somebody on hungry generation went to Google and they left a review they said this is a house of God and a house of prayer so just since we're at it make sure you leave a rating on Google for hungry generation <laughs> it will help for people who search prayer to see that there is a prayer going on you know five o'clock in the morning the church door opens uh, here Monday to Friday and if you're not a morning person at six to seven Monday to Friday even Saturdays there's prayer going on here we're believing for a time to be where constant non-stop 24 7 prayer going on here for the glory of God that we will bring a movement and a revival to our city and to our region can somebody say amen can somebody say amen for many people prayer has become a garbage dump where you dump your problems your worries and you go only to prayer as your last resort instead of as a priority I was getting a haircut recently and a lady who was cutting my hair she uh, she asked me what I do for a living and so I asked I told her that I, I work at the church and I'm a pastor and so she looked around quickly if there was anybody else and she says can I ask you a question <laughs> so the fact that she looked around told me that it's gonna get spiritual and so and I was like of course throw, throw it my way we have next 15 minutes and so and she says she started telling me her prayer request she says is, this, is it okay that I pray this prayer to God of course I said of course it's okay to pray to God I said but I'm not really sure that you're ready for the answer I'm like prayer is not just so you get the burden off of your shoulders it's so you can get the answer and I'm like the kind of prayer that you're praying that you're telling me right now I have a feeling I know what the answer is going to be because I pray the same prayer many times and I'm like I'm not sure you're ready for the answer and she wasn't interested in the answer she was just making sure it's okay to pray and I was like girl you, you got green light <laughs> go pray and pray and pray and pray all the time and people pray people who don't come to church pray Jesus actually say said heathens pray it means people who don't have a relationship with God pray and they think that the more words they give to God the more chances they have to be heard by God and Jesus says that's not really how it works Jesus says hypocrites pray it means people who pray to get approval from people or pray thinking it's gonna it's gonna give them brownie points in heaven you know it's gonna give them a higher chance of actually making it to heaven people pray everywhere but Jesus introduced different kind of prayer to his disciples he says but when you pray pray differently because he didn't tell us to pray to a God who is so distant he didn't pray us to, to pray to a God who is religious ruler he says when you come to prayer come as kids to the father and address him as your father not as your creator not as your savior not as your healer not as your deliverer not as the one who supplies your needs according to his riches and his glory as your dad it gives different meaning to prayer and when Jesus introduced prayer one of the first times that Jesus prayed I want you to see what happened when he prayed because this becomes the model of what makes prayer different why many people are frustrated with prayer why many people give up on prayer why many people are disappointed in prayer is because your and my prayer sometimes misses the mark of how Jesus wants us to pray if we will strive to pray like Jesus wants us to pray prayer will be rejuvenating refreshing reviving it will change our life it will be so powerful that people around you will ask teach me how to pray disciples of Jesus didn't ask Jesus teach us how to heal the sick they didn't ask Jesus Jesus teach us how to walk on water they were so impressed with how his prayer life was they said Jesus teach us how to pray I want you to see this in Luke chapter 3 verse 21 when all were gathered, when all people were baptized, by the way baptism next Sunday, 
it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized another reason to get baptized Jesus did get baptized and while he prayed see when we have people getting out of baptism they usually go Wah! when Jesus got out of the baptism he went bada 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 bada. The Bible says he was getting out of the, I mean Jesus was such a powerful prayer warrior. He was praying on the cross, he was praying in the garden, he was praying on the mountains, he was praying early. The Bible says often early would draw himself in the wilderness and here Jesus is praying in baptism. He's getting out of the river Jordan and the Bible says and while he was praying something happened. The heaven was open. The Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form like a dove upon him and the voice from heaven came saying this is my beloved son. That is a different prayer than what usually we are accustomed to. This wasn't prayer where Jesus was casting his anxieties on God and saying God you know how life is hard. This was a different prayer and it had a different result. I want you to I want to point out just few little nuggets from this prayer. This prayer was birthed out of obedience not desperation. Jesus didn't have a problem he was facing. He was obedient to his father and out of obedience this prayer was born. If the only time you are praying is when you're sick, you're missing the point of prayer. If the only time you're fasting and you're seeking God, if the tragedy has hits, that is not the prayer Jesus wants us to have. Jesus wants our prayer to be based and coming out of obedience, not just out of our knees or out of the desperation. And then we see not only that he was praying out of obedience as he was obedient to the father and getting baptized we see that his prayer it opened the windows of heaven heaven was open the spiritual forces that were that sometimes combat you know us on this earth and god in heaven and they want to block that the principalities they were shifted and the heaven was open see prayer is earth giving heaven a license to interfere sin is earth giving demons to interfere when you pray you clear out the heavens your goal in prayer is not just to get what you want your goal in prayer is not just to lift the anxieties and the worries your goal in prayer is make sure heavens get open because when heavens get open whatever is from here goes up there and whatever is there comes down here and that's why sometimes worship becomes the way that heavens is open and we see the next thing that happens is the holy spirit comes on jesus I love when in prayer you walk out feeling lighter. You told your needs to God, you feel so much better. But that's not this prayer. Jesus had no demons to lose during prayer. God doesn't want you to limit prayer to getting out the demons. He wants you to pursue further where in prayer you get filled with another spirit. Where another spirit comes on you, the Holy Spirit. In this world there are demons and demons cause pain and demons cause sickness and demons cause calamities unwanted things they cause premature death they cause mental breakdowns demons they bring fear they bring bondage they bring heaviness they, they're a cause of affliction the bible clearly states that they come to steal kill and destroy and prayer is the place where you walk into God and heaven begins to open and those demons they begin to lift but it's not just so you can go and get another demon to come again to prayer it's so that the spirit can descend on you the goal in prayer is not just so God can give me what I want it's so that God can give you someone you need it's the Holy Spirit come on somebody the Holy Spirit descended the Bible says and the voice of God spoke you don't see Jesus experiencing a miracle here. You don't see Jesus having money, getting a car, finding a wife. Jesus not experiencing a breakthrough here, but he hears God's voice. Actually, after this prayer, he went through a very trying times. The goal of prayer is not just so God can hear you, it's so that you can hear him. If prayer is reduced to you talking and talking and talking and talking so you can feel better, it's a one-way street. God did not intend prayer to be a one-way street. What's more important than getting what you need is hearing God who speaks to you. And many people in prayer, they literally see a prayer like a garbage bag. Where you come, you dump the problems, you quickly leave and next week you dump more and you dump more and God comes and picks that up, picks that up. And that's fine if you are there spiritually but I want to tell you something. Jesus introduces a different model of prayer. He says, I want you to live a life of obedience and out of that obedience pray. I want you to seek in prayer to see the heaven comes down on earth. 
in prayer I want you to begin to feel my spirit not just simply wrestle with the demons not just wrestle with the forces of the enemy but I want you to feel my spirit and in prayer walk out even if you don't get a miracle make sure you hear my voice because Paul was praying three times that the thorn will be removed but the thorn wasn't removed but Paul still heard God's voice. Jesus prayed three times, Father let your will please take away this suffering from me and though the Father didn't grant his petition but the angels came and supported him meaning there was a presence of God that was there. Something that is more important than getting request, your request met and that is to know the voice of the Holy Spirit who guides you and leads you and tells you listen I am with you. I know your kid is not turning around but I'm working on them. I know your health may not be turning around but I am your healer. When you feel the voice of God you will go to prayer again. You will go through life again. Your situation might not change but you will. Can somebody say amen. I want us to see that Jesus not only he prayed on this earth but Jesus goes up to heaven and he remains a prayer warrior in heaven. I want us to look at the scripture what it says in Romans chapter 8, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore it is also risen who is even at the right hand of God. We know that Jesus rose from the dead, Easter. We know that he is sitting at the right hand of God and then this is what Romans says, who also makes intercession for us. So while being in heaven Jesus is not sipping on a Kool-Aid, he's not resting, chilling and chillaxing. He's not just watching over the balcony of eternity how we're all struggling and going through stuff and just waiting for you know antichrist to show up so he can kill him and squash him like a bug and come back and establish his kingdom. Jesus is not passive in heaven. Jesus is actually very occupied and for those of you who think he's building your mansion in heaven I'm actually he's building his kingdom on earth by interceding for us on this earth right now. He's busy praying not just busy chillaxing. If he's praying in heaven for us, uh, I think we should also pray on earth for us. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, therefore he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make, inter to make intercession for them. Jesus Christ in heaven right now is praying. He's not preaching, he's, running, he's not running a crusade, he's not singing worship songs. He's praying which tells us that the highest calling any Christian can have is not to be a prophet and apostle it's to be an intercessor is to pray is to have the access to God and begin to plead before God on things on this earth you may say why is Jesus praying in heaven first of all as long as there is devil on earth there needs to be prayer as long as there's one person that does not know God that their sins were already paid for on the cross there needs to be prayer offered as long as there's one person addicted to drugs on this earth, there needs to be prayer offered. As long as there's one family that's facing tragedy, there needs to be prayer offered. As long as there's one person battling arthritis or battling cancer, there needs to be prayer offered. And Jesus doesn't see it as a time to take break because if there is somebody hurting on this earth, he says heaven has to be busy praying. And he says, I'm not going to delegate prayer to a Gabriel or to Michael or to another archangel. I will actually lead this ministry myself. I will spend time praying for my people. In Luke chapter 22 verse 31, it says right before his crucifixion, before going to the trial, Jesus said to Simon, he said, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith will not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren. So this is an example of what it's like when Jesus prays for you. What I want to get out of it is this, Jesus praying for you does very little for you unless you pray for you. Jesus prayed for Simon and he told Simon, he told Peter, he says, Peter I've been praying for you. By the way Peter, do you know why I've been praying for you? Because the devil's been praying against you. So not only you have Jesus praying for you, you have devil praying against you. The Bible calls him the accuser of brethren. The story of Job confirms that. That devil got jealous over Job. He went to God and started literally trashing Job to God. He starts saying bad things to Job. And in this case, devil comes to God and he starts saying bad things about Peter. So Jesus comes to God and he begins to intercede for Peter. One of the reasons Jesus intercedes for you because devil is talking smack about you. 
and Jesus tells Peter Satan has actually been praying and I've been praying but Peter I want you to listen to this watch and you pray lest you enter into temptation Peter my praying and Satan's praying is not going to really tilt the scales what's going to tilt the scales Peter is will you watch and pray and we know Peter was sleeping instead of praying and so guess what happened Peter start going back it's interesting that this is the first time Jesus calls Peter Simon twice Jesus changed his name from Simon which means unstable to Peter means like a rock and Jesus refers for the first time to Peter according to his last name a last name that he used to have according to his old nature and he says Simon Simon why is he saying that because every time you opt to prayerlessness you will always repeat your past if you don't pray you'll stray if you don't pray you start going back to your old nature all things begin to come back all friends begin to reach out when we don't pray just because Jesus is praying for us yes it gives us the boost but there is a devil there is demons who are actually combating us and Jesus who's praying for us is saying pray with me I care so much about you that I pray for you could you care a little bit about yourself that you pray with me for yourself because if you don't pray you'll enter into temptation A lot of times people find themselves overcoming certain issue or certain habit, certain pain, certain thing in the past and you're doing fine but you have to understand if you don't maintain a lifestyle of prayer and dependency on God your Simon may appear again. For some people Simon is weed. For some people Simon is anger. For some people Simon is pornography. For some people Simon is chronic depression or chronic anxiety. For others Simon is just, it's just being insecure. Whatever your Simon is, I want to tell you something. Your Simon is waiting for you to sleep instead of praying and he wants to come back and become who you used to be. But today is the time for the Simon to stay Simon in your past and for you to act like Peter by saying Jesus I will pray with you. Come on somebody. When we don't live a life of prayer not only we will stray instead of praying but like Peter we will live out of our emotion instead of devotion. Peter made a lot of promises. I'll go with you Jesus. I'll die for you. He was a big talker and when it came to the actual doing something, slept, cussed like a sailor, denounced Jesus three times, ran back to his old ways. Every time you your devotion is really measured not in how big you can talk it's how long you can walk with God everybody can talk the talk everybody can raise their hands when your favorite song is playing when we are in the atmosphere of believers but it's about battle with the blankets in the morning it's about battle with the spirit of slumber in the afternoon where you, you really want to go home and just watch the watch the stranger things or other stuff stranger things on Netflix and but you know the Holy Spirit is pulling you and he says listen but let, let's let's come to prayer you know the, you know the church is open at, at from six to seven you could come and but I, I'm, I'm so busy you've been playing golf every day for the past three years you can skip one time and there is that battle that happens but you made so many promises see people who don't live a life of prayer always over promise and under deliver because they feel guilty and so they constantly make big, bigger promises new year's resolutions next, next year i'm gonna pray more listen promise less do more less talking more walking less emotion more devotion and just live a life of prayer when we don't pray we begin to warm ourselves at the wrong fire peter quickly went from cursing to being in the fire with people who were against Jesus and the crazy part he actually tried to fit in he tried to be like them I think he threw a few bad words around just to you know to make him understand I am not a Galilean I am not belonging to Jesus they quickly found out that he's a bad bad hypocrite they said weren't you with Jesus and he just throws a few little f and this f and that no no blank this Bible says he was cursing God didn't call you to fit in you were anointed to stand out but when you pray eagles don't try to earn the high opinions of chicken and lions don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep God gave you royalty inside God gave you authority inside but when you don't live a life of prayer you become subject to popular opinion 
you become too scared of what people will say you'll become too scared of this and that and you try to fit into the clubs to the groups God called you to change and influence prayerlessness is deadly you may say but Jesus is praying for me that's not really what's going to change your life what's going to change your life is when Jesus will pray with you not just for you you know what Jesus tells Peter Peter eventually goes and starts to catch fish he can't catch fish Jesus prepares a breakfast at sea and he calls Peter he says Peter and it's like almost like an like an irony he says have you caught anything remember Peter is a professional fisherman fishing all night he just ran away from God and Jesus says Peter have you caught anything and Peter says no Jesus I haven't caught anything I'm empty I, I've been fishing all night I'm empty and Jesus says well since you're empty I got some fish right here come over and the Bible says Peter jumped in the lake and he started to swim to Jesus and when he got there he had this meeting with Jesus in the morning breakfast with Jesus and there was this fish there was already stuff prepared and Jesus starts to ask him question Peter do you love me Peter do you love me and the relationship with Peter was restored with God you really want to kick the prayerlessness in the gear have a breakfast with Jesus Jesus is waiting for you at the shore with the revelation and with his presence and with his spirit and he's calling you from your empty life maybe he's calling you from prayerlessness and he says I know you blew it I know you made a new year's resolution I know you made a decision to read the bible but your bible app has been deleted it hasn't been even opened in the past seven months I know that come to me let's have a breakfast let's begin to meet in the morning let's begin to continue that you said Jesus but I blew it he says I know I can change you we can start from here no I'm a backslider no Peter you've been an apostate but I'm about to make you an apostle a breakfast can change your life with Jesus maybe maybe you're not like Peter maybe you're not a morning person you're saying Jesus I can't hear you in the morning <laughs> so I'm sleeping you know to the church in Revelation that lost the passion for God Jesus says behold I stand at the door and I knock and he who hears my voice and opens the door I will dine with him so to all the night owls Jesus is saying I'll meet you at night I'll knock at night if that's if you wake up after 11 p.m let's do it at 12 uh, let's dine together if you can't have breakfast with me let's have a dinner with me but I want to meet with you I want to be with you and that will change your life can somebody say amen come on somebody I know we have people here who feel like if you're not a morning person you can't be with God because everything is about morning it's not just about breakfast sometimes Jesus wants to dine with people and if you're here today and you, you don't wake up until 10 o'clock shame on you by the way but <laughs> Jesus is not guilt tripping you this guy may be guilt tripping you but Jesus ain't guilt tripping you Jesus is saying I'll knock at 5 p.m I'll knock at 6 p.m and I want to dine with you if your breakfast is too early dinner is not too late and I want to meet you there I want to meet you at your time I want to meet with I want to have a relationship with you can somebody say amen as we're going to come to a time of benefits of prayer if you don't spend time with Jesus and you are a believer you either have no idea who Jesus is or you have no idea who you are the reason why we approach God is because he's our father if you don't pray you either forgot who's your daddy or you simply forgot whose kid you are if you don't pray you either forgot who's your daddy or you forgot whose kid you are maybe you, you became God's employee instead of God's child maybe you become God's errand boy instead of God's children because if you have a parent and your dad is loaded you will be talking to him I don't care differences you have with him I don't care your views of point you will be calling him you will be not just for his presence not just but for his presence for his help for his connections for everything and God is loaded silver and gold is mine says the Lord I give power to give God has strength God has everything not just money but peace and joy and righteousness and he's surprised that his kids don't call his kids don't come but they do sometimes you know mow his lawn they do sometimes take care of things and God looks and he says why aren't we talking on the talking terms I'm your dad 
I'm not just your creator, your master, your boss. I'm not just your Lord, the King and sovereign Messiah. I am your father. Didn't my son taught you to come to me and say, our father who is in heaven? Did you forget who you are? Did you forget who I am? But for us as Christians, not only God is our father, but Jesus is our bridegroom. We are his wife. Imagine a husband who treats his wife like a housemate who's on good terms. She doesn't cheat on him. He doesn't beat her. She cooks. He provides the money. She goes to one room. He goes to another room. They don't exchange words. They don't communicate. They don't say anything against each other. That means two people have either forgot who they are. When a believer does not spend time with Jesus, he forgot he or she is the bride of Christ and Jesus is the lover. The first commandment Jesus didn't give us is to clean my house and watch over my kingdom. His first commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. Which means Jesus wasn't intending to start a new religion. There's plenty of them. He was planning to start a romantic, intimate relationship. When we don't talk to him in marriage, in relationship, communication is the blood. If there is no blood, there is no life. If there is no prayer, there is no life in that relationship. Only dead, rustic, dead, boring, predictable routine called religion there was a queen in, in the bible two queens i call them the, the the tales of two queens the queen vashti book of esther is a beautiful book queen vashti was a queen and she was a wife of the king the king planned a big banquet for the man and the queen decided not to waste any time got the wives of those men and decided to do a little little meeting for them as well she was the probably the first woman in the bible started the women's ministry big banquet and during the banquet the king decided to call his wife to show her beauty and to be with her in front of his royal team his royal kings and the wife of the king who was so busy with the women's ministry she says i can't come i'm not going why i'm busy and the king's like excuse me that's my palace that's my food you're giving to your women she's like who do you think you are woman did you forget? You're not my servant. You're not my concubine. You are my wife. Your first duty is not to please the women. Your first duty is to be with me. And the Bible says because of that act, which was not cheating or unfaithfulness, it was an act of busyness which hindered her seeing the king. She lost her crown. She didn't lose her life. She didn't lose her place in the palace. Most likely she became a concubine. She acted like a concubine instead of acting like a wife. You know it's interesting in Ephesians church in Ephesus, church of Ephesus in Revelation was doing everything for Jesus. It was working hard for Jesus. It was patient for Jesus. It was everything and Jesus writes to the church of Ephesus and he says uh, through John, he says you are so incredible. You're working so hard. You're putting in overtime. I see you're like really really just doing so much. I'm so proud of you but he says I have one problem. You don't love me. He says you're working for me. I can get angels to work for me. But I, you're not an angel. You're my wife. I don't just expect your duties. I expect your desire, your passion. And he says this, if you don't change, I'll remove your lampstand. Meaning, if you don't act like a wife, I won't act like a husband. There will be no intimacy between us. You'll continue to work. You'll continue to go to heaven. But that's not why I bought you with my precious blood. I bought you to be my wife and I love you with unfailing, unfailing, unconditional love. And I want you to make it a priority in the midst of your busyness to remember you're not my servant, you're my wife. Spend time with me, fall in love with me again and again. What you're doing is great, applause, you're gonna get the reward but I want intimacy. So Esther comes on the scene after Vashti and Esther who was a queen she doesn't see the king for about 30 days and Esther's nation is about to be destroyed as the Jewish nation is about to be completely wiped out and Esther was a Jewish girl and so Esther has this pressure Esther has this burden and she wants to go now tell the king about this problem and instead of that I want you to see the comparison the difference Esther doesn't lead the women to feast she leads the women to fast she gets all the women in the court and say hey girls it's time to lose those pounds <laughs> three days I know you're not Jewish I know you might not care about what's going on with me but we are gonna go fast why because before I go to the king I gotta break through the spiritual realm and then she comes to the king 
uninvited the king doesn't invite her the king doesn't ask for her she invites herself and this is a little lesson for each one of us you don't have to wait until you feel to pray to pray the bible says draw near to me and i will draw near to you sometimes you take the initiative some people say well i don't feel god is drawing me why don't you draw yourself because the scripture says in the new testament draw near to god push yourself to God and God says the moment you make your steps toward me I'll extend the scepter I'll extend my mercy it means I will meet you halfway if you start going on my backyard like a father to the prodigal son I'll run to meet you don't always wait for God to give you the desire and push you or maybe use the problems in your life to push you on your knees listen you're an adult push yourself make yourself Oh, it's so hard to do that. It's easy to do that with the remote control. It's easier to do that with prayer. Just tell yourself, make up your mind. I'm going to see God. If God pulls me or not, I'm going to see God. And Esther, she steps into the palace of the king. The king extends the scepter. And I want you to see something. Esther does not ask the king about her life. Why? Because the Jewish girl can wait. The wife cannot. What's more important than her problems is her position and her identity and her identity is a wife not a Jewish girl and she says my problems they can wait two more days but who I am I don't want to lose that world is falling apart people are going to lose their lives I know but the only thing they can change that is if I be a wife and she doesn't tell the king please we need to talk about the problem she says king I have a feast for you why because I am your wife Vashti prepared a king feast for the women Esther prepared a feast for her husband Vashti had no problems Esther had only problems because see Esther didn't just have cancer didn't just have family falling apart she faced death for all of her family tree that she knew close and extended and that's worse than any sickness than any family drama or any problem when you're facing death and the clock is ticking but even then she pushed the problems to the side and says I'll deal with you two days later but I first need to be a wife and when she was a wife to a king she gave him a feast something happened the next day she gave him a feast again and this is where the change happened the man who was against her his name was Haman he came there as well and this is the biggest mistake Haman met and made in his life he did not know who Esther was he thought she was just a beautiful girl in the court he did not know he was messing with the wife of a king who knew she was the wife of the king on the second feast when she presented a prayer request and says king i'm not asking you for money i'm not asking you for gold i just ask you for my life and the lives of my people that's all she says if we become slaves I'm fine I just don't want to die yet her fears were drowned in his perfect love and the Bible says this when the king heard that he walked off the palace and Haman who was so bold who was so strong he knelt before Esther and started begging for mercy why because he realized he was messing with the wife of a king and Esther didn't play a Jewish girl she played a royalty in the midst of a mess in her life don't ever stop worshiping God because you got worries in your life don't ever stop loving God because you got labors in your life and don't ever trade your problems for his presence or trade the palace or or trade his presence for his path for his presence I mean don't ever cause the problems to become a distraction don't ever other things why because it's in those things when you stand in who you are before God even if your world is falling apart even if your health is failing but you're saying God I know these problems they're important but if I die one second after my death they're not important cancer is not important one second after your death all of your financial problems are not important one second after your death you know what's important one second after your death is who you are 
and therefore you don't want to give the secondary things that don't matter when you die a highest priority when you stand in the presence of everlasting and eternal king who is your husband come somebody say amen I want to challenge each person this morning during this Christmas season Jesus Christ is not a baby in the manger he's seated as a king and he happens to be your husband if you are a Christian now for those of you maybe men and the word Jesus is your husband offends you get used to it in heaven you won't have a gender the only gender you will have is that you will be loved on by the creator of the universe Jesus Christ God is your father come to him as a kid Jesus is your husband come to him as his wife that's why as a Christian if you don't pray you either forgot who you are or you forgot who God is you have to pray you have to live a life of intimacy with God why because Jesus paid a dear price to be able to have that intimacy prayer is not a garbage dump it's not a spare tire it's an intimacy and it's a relationship with God amen hi there if you're like me and you like to click on things go ahead and click right here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this way, we'll be able to send the content to you directly. And each week you'll stay updated with the things that we post. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.